All right. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for coming to practice with us this morning. Um, this is with Love DC's Practice with Love pop-up yoga class, which is sponsored by the U.S. Botanic Garden. So we are so, so, so grateful to the United States Botanic Garden for hosting these classes, even when their doors are closed and we're all staying home to keep each other and our community safe. Um, so it just brings me so much joy that even though in this new platform we can't see you and you can't see each other, just knowing that there's 84 other people coming to their mat this morning to practice together, to breathe together, to flow together from DC and also from beyond. It's just so um, heartwarming to feel so connected with everybody and hopefully that we all feel connected with each other even while we are separate. Um, so find a tall seat wherever you are, or if you're just lying down and that feels really delicious, stay lying down. Just stay wherever you are, but notice your breath and maybe you bring both hands to your heart. I made, oh, I hope it's close by. I made a little painting the other day and I wanted to share with you. It's just, you know, a little me. But it says, I am connected to everyone and everything. And for those in a city, you know, I imagined all of like the apartments, all the people around us, all the houses and the neighborhoods, all the surrounding neighborhoods, all the people way out in the farm, so far away, and just the entire world, right? So maybe you just bring that to mind. Like, yes, you are there on your mat, on your cushion, but maybe you just imagine being connected with every other living being everywhere in the world. And then maybe you let your mind wander to an act or something that makes you think of connection. In previous weeks, we've let our minds rest on the idea of gratitude and acts of loving kindness, but today maybe focus on the word connection and what does that look like or feel like to you today in this very unusual time that we live in? What does connection mean to you? What does it feel like? What does it look like? We've all had to renegotiate what connection looks like, how we can connect with our loved ones, how we can connect with our community in ways that keep everyone safe. So if you have something in mind about connection or an act of connection or something that just is feeling very relevant to you and you want to share that, again, so that we can just feel connected, feel free to move over to your chat box and just type in connection looks like and feels like for you today. And if you just want to sit with that feeling and there's really no way to put it into words, that's okay too. That's beautiful. Just sit in that space of feeling connected. Elizabeth said that writing letters is what connection looks like to her in these times. Phone calls, FaceTimes, and events like this from Lisa. Thank you guys for sharing. Mm, the waves of the ocean, connecting with family, mindfulness of friends. Wow, thank you so much for sharing everyone, making sure to be present from afar for the people who need it. Mm, online yoga, yes, me too. That's why we're all here, right? We just need this connection. We could do yoga by ourselves. I say that even when we're at the garden, right? Like we could all choose to do yoga by ourselves at home on Saturday mornings, but we don't. So many of us choose to get up and bike or walk or drive over to the garden or to our favorite yoga studio and be in community and to feel connected. So um, thank you. Feel free to keep sharing. I'm going to turn it over to Kate. Um, but I'll leave the chat box open at the end. I won't close out right away. So if you want to go back and um, read through some of the things that connection means to everyone. Those will be available to you at the end of class. And again, thank you guys so much. A big thank you to Kate. I'm very excited to practice with you guys today. Bye. Thank you, Heather. Hi, I am Kate, Kate Rivard. Um, thank you for having me, Heather, and for that wonderful meditation or um, 
this idea of connection. Uh, I will share mine, which would be teaching online yoga classes. I would definitely say I feel so much better after I teach. Um, that was so hard to not be able to go to the studio every day and practice and teach and work with everyone I see because that is a big part of our work is connecting with you all. Um, so thank you for joining me and the Botanical Gardens. Uh, we won't really need any specific props because I know you're at home, which makes it a little harder if you don't have props. But if you have two blocks, it's nice to have them on hand maybe a strap or a scarf or a belt or something. But we'll get started. Um, I am going to start with a little meditation myself. And this is one from Thich Nhat Hanh. Um, it's very simple. And although it's not necessarily about connecting uh, with each other, well, I guess ultimately it could be, um, it's about finding this grounding in ourselves because this can be such an overwhelming, uncertain time. And it's very simple, it's I've arrived, I'm home. And we'll just connect that to our breath. But we'll start in a comfortable position on your mat. You can sit if you need to lay down, if you want to stand up. Just find a position that's really comfortable in your body. Close your eyes once you're there. and settle into a moment of stillness. I always start practice a little bit of peace and quiet. So you have permission to turn your thinking mind off right now. You have permission to let go of everything that's going on in life from your week. <clears throat> and just notice the sounds of your room. I know sometimes practicing at home can feel really distracting. But switch the perspective on that. Instead of a distraction, just observe without labeling, without attaching language, and use sound as an anchor to the space. It's here to pull you in, be present, and nothing more. And then notice how you're feeling right now. And notice from a place free of expectation, free of judgment. Whatever you're feeling, feel it fully. Try not to change that. And I invite a deep breath in, so fill up. And just pause at the top, hold. Then open your mouth, audibly sigh out. Try to soften, relax your shoulders. Just inhale again, deep breath in. This time, keep your mouth closed, exhale through your nose, slow and steady. More of a diaphragmatic breath, inhale, fill up. Exhale, let it go, we call this ujjayi in yoga. And then we'll add this little mantra. Inhale, I've arrived, I've arrived, I've arrived. Exhale, I'm home, I'm home. Inhale, I've arrived, I've arrived, I've arrived. Exhale, I'm home, I'm home, I'm home. And you're on. Be letting this little mantra start to feel really grounding. If it helps, picture something in nature that feels grounding to you. So big tree with roots, big plants with roots, and bend the ocean floor. Something in nature that depicts this sense of safety and grounding. And keep that image in your head and this little mantra until you really deeply feel it within yourself. But no matter what is going on in the external world, you have yourself this sense of home within. Maybe an intention, one of grounding, an intention of being home, or even just an intention of being present is a good place to always come to. But set a little guide to this intention, something you always have to turn to when you need a little more support than in the physical practice of yoga. And 
keep breathing this deeply. Let's open our eyes. Let's meet on our hands and knees. So we'll be in a tabletop position. Keep your knees and feet hip width apart. Spread your fingers wide. We'll start with cat cow. So inhale, lift your heart and tailbone to the sky. And exhale, round. Puff up behind your heart. Look towards your knees. Again, inhale, open through the front of your body. You're going to sort of back bend as you lift. And then exhale, round. Belly in. And again, inhale, arch your spine, lift your gaze. Exhale, puff up, belly in. Take a few more breaths here on your own. Move fluidly back and forth. But feel free to shift around. You have a moment to explore whatever movement your body's calling for right now. Side to side, little circles. If your wrist needs some attention, hands can turn around, stretching the forearms. Even just tucking your toes. If you need to stretch your feet, sit back here for a moment. But take another two deep breaths to even out. And one more deep breath here. Let's meet with a neutral tabletop position. This is called puppy pose. Hips and knees stay aligned. Let's, let's extend arms forward. And either forehead, some of you maybe chin finds the floor. You know, karate chop your hands. I want your palms facing one another. The eyes of your elbows are wrapping more towards the sky now, and this encourages the upper arm to externally rotate, and that will help protect your neck and your upper back. And just create a little muscle memory around how this feels in your shoulders, your arms, your neck and back, as we try to broaden between the shoulder blades. And then take another deep breath like this as you really open your heart, melting towards the floor. And for child's pose, have big toes touch. Let's send hips towards heels, forehead, elbows down, knees can widen. Now this is child's pose. I always like to start here so you know you have a position to come to when you need to rest. So no matter what I'm doing and what we're doing as a group, you have this opportunity to take a break. There's no judgment here. Remember, this is your practice. Whatever you need to feel grounded, to feel at home today, please take it. Child's pose is a great place to come to. Just walk your hands off to the left side of your mat and have right hand stacked on top. We're in a little secret. Take a deep breath into the right side. And I'll switch directions. Bring hands over to the right and another full breath here. Let's bring our hands back to center. Tabletop, hands and knees. Separate your feet. Now for downward dog, tuck your toes. Let's lift the hips up and back to where the ceiling meets the wall behind you. Head can be in line with inner upper arms. And then feel free to move around here. So your hips might sway a little left to right as one leg bends, the other straightens. Just shake your head left and right. A little moment to check in with how your body's feeling as we start to move. I will warn you, since I'm teaching as I'm or practicing, I did a random cartwheel yesterday and I hurt my wrist. So we'll see how it's feeling today. Um, I may not be able to demonstrate everything. Um, and same for you. If you have a little injury, a little pain today, please exercise caution. Just move carefully, respect your body. Let's work into stillness in down dog, but keep breathing. Now, if you're tender or uncomfortable in your back, bend your knees a bit. You're pressing away from the floor with your hands and just head hangs heavy. Now inhale, lift your heels around the balls of your feet. And exhale, heels go left. So we're in a little C curve. Take a deep breath. And then inhale, heels up, come through center. Exhale, heels go right. And again, breathe. Now inhale, rise up, heels stay lifted, belly in, shift it forward, plank. Pause. We're going to hold for a moment as you breathe. So really puff up behind your back. Pull your belly in and look beyond the front edge of your mat. Nice, neutral neck. So as you're breathing and holding, feel this internal and external teeth really starting to build. All the while, remaining nice and calm on the outside. Another deep breath. Okay? Staying in plank, but just put knees on the floor. So let's distinguish the difference here. This is modified plank. We were in table earlier, so make sure hips are more forward of knees. Knees is still up a little. Modifying a chaturanga. Elbows bend, but raise your waist. Lie on the floor, lower bellies. Now cobra, maybe back bend. Inhale, curl up through your heart, wrap shoulder heads away from collarbones, and then exhale, melt it back to the floor. 
So now walk your hands outside of your mat, left and right. Tense your fingertips, nice wide elbows. Inhale, rise up, leading from your heart. And then exhale, melt it back down, find the floor. Let's bring our hands right back to where they were, but slide them more in line with your navel. And repeat cobra, otherwise up dog, arms straight, with knees lifts, open through your heart, downward facing dog, press it back. Take a deep breath. Now gaze forward, let's walk feet to hands. Stay in a forward fold with legs a bit apart. Really bend your knees, have your head hang really heavy. And if comfortable, grab opposite elbows with your hands and then sway side to side. Imagine you're like seaweed or an elephant trunk or red doll, whatever you want to imagine right now. And I will be still for a moment and then reach back, interlock your fingers, have your knuckles waterfall overhead. Bend your knees a lot, maybe belly can rest on thighs, but we'll stand. So hands pull you up, shoulders over hips, sweep your hands high to the sky. Now interlock your fingers, index fingers pointing, lift, inhale, and exhale, arch to the right, another little C curve. Inhale, come up again. And exhale, arch to the left, relax your shoulders, pull your ribs in. And inhale, let's face center, and take hands to your lower back, and supporting your back bend, hips press forward, leaning into hands, but lift up through your heart. So you're lengthening in this back bend. And then we'll recenter and just connect your hands in prayer at heart, uh, heart center. Big toes might touch. Close your eyes here again. And before we start to move a little more, find your intention. So leading this practice with this sense of intention, with purpose, moving mindfully, trying not to rush. And all the while, this sense of grounding, the sense of arriving and feeling at home in your own body and with your breath. We'll do a few little variations of sun salutation, A to warm up. Inhale, reach your hands up to the sky, lengthen, and exhale, fold. It might help bending your knees when you fold. And now look up, lengthen, look halfway. Let's step right foot back, low lunge. Put right knee down, left knee bends. If it's comfortable, you're on your fingertips. Maybe you have blocks to put hands on, but have your hips just descend forward as you hold and breathe. So your gaze is up, your heart is lifted. And now straighten your front leg in more of a half split or like a runner's lunge. And then flex your foot. This is all the dorsiflex. Notice how this little adjustment can make such a big change. Maybe you notice more behind your calf and knee. And now bend your left knee again. So we're back in this lunge and step left foot back plank. Now, if it was helpful, knees can lower, but chatter on the lower halfway, look forward. Up dog or cobra, pick a back bend as you inhale. Downward facing dog, exhale, press it back. So several breaths as we rest in downward dog and warm up. So settling into the shape, remember a bend in your knees might be helpful for some. Have your ears in line with inner upper arms and you're pressing your chest towards your shins but then zip your front ribs in and pull lower belly towards the spine. So we're still really integrated around your core. It's not really meant to be a deep shoulder chest opener necessarily. We want to stay really strong in this shape as well. Take another deep breath. Now inhale, pick your right heel up to the sky. And exhale, right foot steps through. No lunge on this side, so we're putting left knee down. Remember, you might be on your fingertips, you could be on your blocks, but we're here to hold and breathe. Notice how it feels in your neck and upper back by just looking up. It might feel a little different. Remember, little changes to make such a big difference in how we feel. Let's straighten your right leg, half split. Bend that dorsiflex as you fold, but reach heart beyond your toes, a little more length with this. And now bend your right knee, so we're back in a lunge, and move your hands up a ways but a standing split, so left leg up to the sky. And now lower left leg to cross behind right. This can get confusing. So your pinky toes are close to touching, and then deeply bend your right knee. Maybe this left leg is straight, and have hands walk to the right side of your mat if you want to take it deeper in your IT band. Head just hands. Let's recenter your hands, and uncross your left leg, so we're in a traditional forward fold. Half lift, inhale, open through your heart, and that's so mal, look at your shins again. When you inhale, we'll stand, reach your hands to the sky. When your palms meet, thumbs find your heart. Thumb is easy here, just mountain pose. Inhale again, arms reach, and exhale, hinge, fold over your legs. 
Inhale, expand, look up. And when you exhale, left foot back. This time, high lunge. You're on the ball of your back foot and arms reach high. And just settle into the shape first as your shoulders relax. Let's push the left heel further back. Bend your right knee more. We have right toes invisible just by glancing down. Tailbone scoops underneath you. Inhale. And then exhale, hands to floor, step back, plank. Again, maybe knees down, but chaturanga, elbows in, lower. Up dog or cobra, inhale, press through all 10 toes. Downward facing dog, exhale. All right, we have a few moments again just to settle in. Another great opportunity to be in child's pose instead. And if you're sticking with me, try to push firmly away from the floor with your hands. So try working so much power in your arms and hands that you elongate through your sides and your waist. And you're pressing through knuckles, fingertips, and especially between that spot of your thumb and index finger, that little meaty portion. That'll keep the whole wrist safe, unless you're cartwheeling. <laughs> Let's take another full breath. And inhale, left heel lifts to the sky. Exhale, left foot steps through. Anjane Asana, we're in high lunge, arms to sky, settle in with the exhale, continue breathing. Remember, lower back, so let's scoop tailbone down, feel the ribs zip in. How does that feel in the right quad, hip, and uh, psoas? Shoulders should soften, relax your jaw. Notice what else is gripping as you hold. And now hands to floor in front of toes, standing slit, right leg up this time. Let's lower right leg behind left, pinky toes are close to touching. Front knee is bent, head is hanging, and if you'd like to work more, hands move to the left, stretch that IT band, breathe. Okay, recenter your hands, um, cross your right leg. Inhale, it's called Ardha Uttanasana, a half lift, look forward. Exhale, mount and fold. Let's rise, lead from your heart. Inhale, palms press overhead, and exhale, hands come to center. Okay. Sun salutation A, the full version. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, hinge, fold over your feet. Inhale to open your heart. Chaturanga, you can step, maybe hop, your choice, but lower halfway. Upward facing, inhale, shoulders away from collarbones. Downward facing, exhale, stay here, we're breathing. So remember puppy pose, where we have the arms extended and your hands kind of karate chops. Let's recreate that muscle memory I was talking about. So squeeze your inner elbows in, wrap the outer armpits more towards the pinky toes. So that's that external rotation of the upper arm while you're still pressing through the knuckles. And that should hopefully create a little more space in your neck, upper back, and shoulders to keep it safe. Take two more breaths. One more breath here. Now look Forward, when you inhale, it's a step or hop, light as you can, feet to hands. Look up, lengthen again, and exhale, fold. It's okay to have bent knees. Inhale, rise, gaze lifts, heart follows, palms meet above you. Exhale, hands to heart center. All right, chair pose. Knees can bend, and either arms are overhead, or maybe your hands are at your heart in prayer, whatever you need right now. I'm holding now, we're breathing. So shift back. Align knees over toes, and then again, scoop your tailbone down. Just a little subtle scoop to pull your belly in. Relax your shoulders, relax your eyes. Inhale, and exhale, fold forward. Inhale, expand, look up. Chaturanga, when you exhale, we're floating back. Lower as strong as a plank, heels are pressing back. Upward facing, inhale. Downward facing, exhale. Now inhale, pick right heel up, and exhale, step through warrior one. Plant your left heel in and down, reach your hands to the sky. Holding with this, it's a little different than the lunge we were in before because that back heel is down. So actively press through the pinky side of the left foot, and then try to revolve your left rib cage forward. We want to protect the back knee by working that outer foot. Now keep breathing, bend right knee more. Again, toes are invisible, inhale. Let's exhale, warrior two. Arms will open up the length of your mat. So we're opening hips and collarbones uh, and your rib cage. Our body tends to move where your gaze is. So if you notice your torso spiraled forward, keep the ribs in, draw them a little more to the left. 
Now reverse, inhale. Right palm to sky, left hand can slide down your left leg. Exhale, hands to the floor. Plank. Now you have a choice to go to down dog here or chaturanga, out of vinyasa. Upward facing from there, inhale. Downward facing dog, exhale. So please feel free to skip the vinyasas at any time. Totally optional. I just don't always say it, but know that is a choice. Inhale, left heel picks up. Exhale, step it through. Warrior one, back heel spins in and down, arms reach up. So again, pause here. Be mindful of your back knee by working pinky side of right foot. You're bending your front knee and scooping tailbone down, even here. So relax the shoulders. Inhale, lift your heart though. And then exhale, peel it open, heel to arch, warrior two. So once you're settled in, have your left knee track towards left pinky side of mat. And again, we're really strong through our center. Keep scooping left sit bone down a bit to lengthen your back. Inhale now, reverse, left palm high. Exhale, hands to floor. Plank, if you're adding it, chaturanga, gazing forward a bit. Upward facing, inhale, shoulders over, knuckles if you can. Downward facing dog, exhale. We have a few breaths here, just to settle in. Feel free to be in child's pose. Give yourself a little space to relax. So unclench your teeth and jaw, your throat, your eyes, your forehead. Let those soften, smooth out. Your whole face relaxes. Let's take one more breath. Good, looking forward. Feet meet hands light as you can. Come to the top. Look up, inhale. And fold, exhale. Okay, chair pose. Knees bend and arms are at heart center or overhead again. Now, if you want to work harder today, or just a little more, pick your heels up as high as you can. It's not easy, but you'll sit a little deeper. Woo. And keep breathing as you relax, neck, shoulders, upper back. And just when you think your legs are starting to shake and can't take any more, sit down, if you can, two more inches and breathe. Woo. Inhale, and then fold, exhale, ground your heels. Inhale, look up. Float it back, we're meeting in down dog if you want to go straight there. Chaturanga though, if you're following along. Upward facing, inhale. Downward facing dog, exhale. All right, pick right heel up, inhale. Right foot through, warrior one. Exhale, back heel spins down. Arms up, inhale. Warrior two, exhale. Okay, reverse now, inhale, right palm high. And side angle. So when you exhale, lower right elbow to right thigh. Your left arm will rainbow overhead, palm faces the floor. So please feel free to stay here. We're opening left hip and shoulder back behind you. Some of you know the bind, half bind, full bind, your choice. Maybe even birds of paradise if you usually practice that. But if you want to continue with me, your right hand might lower to the floor outside of right pinky toe. Try to bend your front knee deeper with that. And then again, open your heart towards the ceiling. And your front knee is deeply bent, but let's stay buoyant in that hamstring, just so we're not collapsing into the hip and knee. Take another deep breath. Those of you in Birds of Paradise, come back out. And now look down, frame right foot with hands. Put your left knee down. Ooh, that's a lot to hold. Keep your left hand where it is, right hand on top of right thigh like this, and spin, look over your right shoulder. It's really our first twist. If you're comfortable, try bending your left knee, and this might be enough to open up your left quad muscles, but if you're really comfortable holding your foot with your hand, feel free to do so. It might help to move right foot off to the side a little further. And now your hips just descend. Let's add to the twist, right shoulder back. Try to keep right knee in line with middle toes. You have four quad muscles on each side. And to work them evenly, keep the joints aligned. Now set your left foot down, lift your right palm high. So side plank, option one, bottom knee stays down of the kickstand, right foot steps back. Option two, feet stack. Option three, whatever top leg variation you want, but stay for three breaths. Our uh, hips arch, like you're lifting away from a little Bunsen burner flame. Take one more breath. We'll meet in plank. Okay, hands to floor. If you're adding it, chaturanga dandasana, exhale. In up dog, really lift through the sternum and collarbones. 
Now we're facing dog, exhale. So stay here for a few breaths. I'm going to turn around so that you have a better view and maybe you can hear me better as well. I'm gonna do all of that on the other side. Good, take two more breaths here. One more. Okay, inhale, left heel lifts. Exhale, warrior one. When you step through, the back heel spins down and arms up, inhale. And exhale, warrior two, let's open. Reverse right away, inhale. And side angle, exhale, elbow to thigh. Right arm reaches past your ear, palm faces down. So again, it's a great place to stay right here, but if you want to bind Birds of Paradise, you have those options. For the next five or so breaths, an option to add on, left hand to floor, outside of pinky toe. And revolve your left ribs up to the sky as your right shoulder relaxes. Good, another two breaths. If you're standing, come back out, one more breath. Okay, frame left foot with hands. Let's drop the right knee to the floor. Move your left foot a few inches to the side of your mat. And remember, right hand staying where it is. Bring left hand on top of thigh. Just to start with a twist, look over your shoulder. If comfortable, bend your right knee. And if sustainable, hold your foot with your hand. And then have your hips just release. Yeah, a little love to your hips, the front of your right quad. And then add the twist, left shoulder, left ribs back. Right foot lowers, left palm lifts. Vashisasana is side plank. So this left uh, foot will step back. You can keep your bottom knee down. Great place to stay. Others uh, adding on, maybe your feet are stacked. But hips arch, try to keep your left hip staying right over the right. And then keep a little bend in your standing elbow just to keep it safe. One more breath. All right, let's meet in plank. If you're adding it, Chaturanga Dandasana, exhale. And then Urdhva Mukha, inhale, create a back bend. Adho Mukha Shanasana, exhale. Good. Let's stay here again. You have a few breaths just to settle in. Feel free to play with a different pose if you want here or child's pose. Again, I am going to turn around just so you can see me better. Take two more breaths here. If you're in child's pose, consider down dog. One more breath. Inhale, pick your right heel up. Exhale, step it through. So with high lunge, stay on the ball of your back foot. Let's lift our arms up. Okay, so once you're really steady and stable, this is a little different. We're twisting, but send left arm straight forward, right arm back. And then peel the right ribs towards your back thumb. And to reverse, bring right hand, left thigh, left palm reaches. You feel that in the left quad, your psoas, your hip. Now for warrior two, you'll ground your left heel and spiral your arms around. We just turn the torso around. Then you need to adjust your feet, but then straighten your right leg. So triangle, just shorten your stance, maybe one or two steps. And I want this back leg internally rotated to have the toes slightly pointing more forward, but your ribs navel right over pubic bone. And then hinge, grab right shin below your knee, have your left palm visible above your nose, just so it's not splaying out too far. Really integrated shoulder girdle. This may be enough. Try to draw shoulders back to align upper and lower body. And again, the right ribs are revolving to the sky. Hand could lower, try not to collapse forward though. I'm just holding, enjoying, I love triangle pose, it's one of my favorites. And this is really more about opening up rather than just grabbing your big toe or stretching the hamstrings. You're trying to open the front of your body, even your chest, and this left lower back area, the lats, the glutes, all around. Take one more breath. Okay, inhale, let's come up. And exhale, hands to waist, parallel your feet. So turn the right toes in. And we'll hinge for a wide-legged forward fold. So press it into A. 
your hands shoulder width find the floor and let your head just hang i know some of you might love to invert here it's fine you can do that please be really careful about it i can't spot you or even see you if you're sticking with me you may need to bend your knees but let's work pinky sides of feet down and with your elbows bent like a chatter on the shelf, use your hands to pull your collarbones between your shins. And then the weight spills forward just a little more. Relax neck and shoulders. Let's take two more breaths. One more breath. You're doing great. All right, look up. Inhale. Just wait here. Exhale. Now this is this, it's called skandasana. It's a side squat. Bend your right knee. Straighten your left leg and flip the heel down and the toes up so this dorsiflex again. And we'll just settle in. You may stick with this. Some of you know bringing palms in prayer or even some kind of bind. But take three more breaths. Try not to collapse and run the back. I'd rather your right heel be off the floor and your hips buoyant than the heel down and your shoulders collapsing. Okay, one more breath. Now, frame your right foot with your hands returning you're around into a low lunge. And let's place the left knee down. Okay, here's the fun part. Straighten your right leg. We're in a half split. So we've been here before, right? And you have several options and just stay here is option one. Option two, bring right hand inside of your shin and see if you can come to your forearms. Oof, that's pretty intense. Those of you that are highly motivated this morning at 11 a.m. on a Saturday, you can play with full Hanumanasana. Now your right heel can inch a little forward, tuck left toes under, scoot the left knee back. And you'll just work in little increments like this, forward, back, take your time. This is not an easy thing to do. I know this. Uh, <laughs> this pose is based off of a fickle monkey god. And just like the pose itself, some days, you can get right into the splits. Other days, you have a lot of space between your hips and the floor. And don't worry about the aesthetics of it. Close your eyes if you need to and just feel into it. That space between your pelvis and the floor is your potential. So don't think of it as anything other than that. But try to relax, try to ease yourself into it and just be present. Remember, inhale, I've arrived and exhale, I'm home. So wherever you're at in this pose is where you're meant to be. We've been in this for a while though. So let's come out, let's inch the left knee forward, right knee back, bend your right knee. Now we haven't done a lot of twists today. So let's inhale, arms up, palms meet, and exhale, hands come to prayer at your heart. If you're ready for prayer twist, you're welcome to take it, left elbow, right thigh. But again, we haven't done a lot, so maybe left hand down, right palm high is more appropriate. If you're following along with elbow to thigh, back knee can always lift. But three more breaths on your exhale, thumbs meet between your collarbones someday as your front knee bends a little deeper. One more breath. Okay, look down, hands to floor. Listen closely, one-legged down dog, pick your right leg up and back. It's going to be really open, nice and stretchy, nice and juicy. Bend your right knee and let your hip really hang open. Feel free to stay here. Some of you that know how to flip over into Urdhvadanurasana, or like we call it wild thing, you're welcome to take it. But just another two breaths. If you did flip, flip back over, meet me here. And then as a group, straighten right leg. You can stay put, otherwise one-legged chaturanga, shift it forward, look forward, lower halfway. Two legs for up dog, go point your toes in the back bends, downward facing dog, exhale. Okay, you have a few breaths again to settle into wherever you need to be. Here, child's pose, maybe a handstand if that's in your normal practice. I am going to turn around one more time. And you have two more breaths. One more breath. Okay. From down dog, left heel lifts up. And exhale, step it through. So a high lunge to start from the ball of back foot and the arms reach to sky. Okay. Keep breathing as you feel your front ribs zip in. 
And remember this twist. So right arm straight forward, left arm back, open your chest to that left side wall. And then reverse. So left hand, right thigh, and right palm in the air. Warrior two. So we're pivoting the back heel down and arms turn around. And adjust your stance if needed. Let's straighten the left leg. So triangle pose. We take the trikonasana, the right foot, hop it up a little bit and have right toes in. Hinge, grab your shin. So make sure it's below the knee if you can. And right palm above you. And then again, we tend to collapse forward. It does feel pretty good in the adductor muscles. Um, but we'll get a lot more out of it by leaning back. And then opening up ribs to sky, left rib revolves high. You can lower your hand, but try not to collapse. And then how does it feel in this right lower back area and in your chest? Those are your lats you're probably feeling, and even some of the root, which we all think is kind of lower back, but one of us it's that upper glute. And just breathe. Enjoy this nice opening. Another two breaths. If your neck hurts, it's okay to look down. One more breath. Okay, let's rise up. And this time, hands can clasp behind you. Let's parallel the feet again. Have your toes turn in, press through the outer feet, and then hinge, have your arms waterfall overhead. If you're more comfortable, hands might need to be on the floor instead. So wrap your shoulder heads towards your collarbones, shift just a little bit forward with this, press your outer feet, take two more breaths. And then one more breath. And then carefully, hands to floor, Jenna, just leash out your arms, let's look up halfway. So remember that side squat, your left knee will bend and we're straightening the right leg, there's my knee, let's flip the right toes to point up to the sky. So here, you might bring hands in prayer, you could open in a bind, but keep hips buoyant, chest lift in, flex this right foot, and then get a little deeper into the hamstring, into the calf. And with your next breath, a low lunge. So we'll frame that foot with hands and then turn around and put your right knee down. Okay, when you're ready, straighten your left leg. Remember your options, stay put. You might bring left hand inside of shin. And especially for those of you that do a lot of running, you can try to lower <laughs> to your forearms, quite intense. Or stick with me, Hanumanasana, heel forward. Knee back, heel forward, knee back, and then keep spiraling right ribs towards your front big toe and be patient with yourself. Each side is going to be a little different. That's good, that's okay. Be here at home in your body, wherever it lands. Be proud of what it can do right now. Not an easy task getting anywhere near those splits for a lot of people. Relax your elbows, your wrists. What are you gripping right now? Can your shoulders relax? What if you change your gaze? So if you're looking down, does your neck feel different if you look up? Just an idea. One more breath. Okay, try to bring it back. Sliding left foot back and we're in a lunge. Fiddle with your mat, I know that's tricky. Now from lunge, inhale, arms up. Palms connect and exhale, hands encourage your heart. Hips drop. Remember with this twist, you could do elbow to outer thigh, but hand to floor is a really good alternative. Um, and then here to hold, cool navel ribs in. Option to pick up the back knee is there, but not necessary. If you do though, heel back as far as it can go, front knee more, and then twist. Thumbs meet the sacrum, last breath. All right, look down, hands to floor. One legged down dog, that left leg picks up all the way in the air. Bending your knee and stacking your hips. Uh, again, if you flipped the over the first time, that's fine. I'm just gonna stay here. Keep wrapping left shoulder head towards the floor. Flip back over if you were in the back bend and we'll straighten out left leg. If you want to add it, shift forward, one-legged chaturanga, use your core to stabilize your pelvis. Up dog with two feet, inhale. Downward facing, exhale. Okay, inhale, open your mouth, sigh, and then inhale again. Take out your tongue, make a face you'd never make in public, because here we don't have to worry about it. 
One more breath like that. Inhale. Let it go. Exhale. Look forward. Let's bring feet to hands. Step or hop lightly. Look up. Inhale. And then fold with your exhale. Good. Uh, let's widen our feet a little further than hip width. Heels and toes out and sit in a happy little squat. So your knees are bent and palms are in prayer, elbows wide. It's okay if your heels are off the ground. You could like roll up a blanket and put them underneath them if you have that nearby. But don't worry so much about the heels being grounded. Protect your back. That's what I worry about. So don't let the back round. Lift through your head, through your heart. Feel that buoyancy. I always like to add a little element of strength in everything we do just to protect the joints and really mobility studies show can improve greater when you add an element of strength to the lengthening and the stretching. So from there. Now, please feel free to stay here. Alternatively, if you're going to get tired child's pose, we'll just play simply with a Kasana pro pose if you want to follow along. Totally optional. Do not have to do this. But really key is getting the chatter on the shape with your arms. So arms are shoulder width. Make sure the elbows are wrapping in. Your hands are on the floor. Lift your bum up just halfway and then have your big toes touch. They need to touch anyways. Might as well start here or B. And then create the chaturanga shelf. See if you can, there's a few ways to do this. I like to crisscross upper arm close to right below the armpit and the upper shin. You could do knee to armpit. If you don't have enough flexion today in your spine, like this is flexion, remember the, the cat shape, then you can squeeze inner knees to outer arms instead. So anything works, but then pop up behind your back and pull your belly in. It helps to look forward and then lean into hands. And then hopefully my little cartwheel wrist, it's okay. You might lift one foot, maybe the other. And then you're pushing down, lifting up through bum and gaze, belly in. Now we'll meet in down dog. So if you want to try, keep your bum lifted and a little hop. We're already in the cheddar on the arms. Up dog, inhale from there. Downward facing dog, exhale. Take a deep breath. Okay, pigeon. Let's lift the right heel up and bring right knee to floor outside of your pinky finger. Make sure it's outside of your hip line. You can get the most out of it. The left knee can scoot back. And just stay on your hands for a moment and feel this femur plug back actively. Imagine like Lego pieces plugging in together, your, your femur and your hip socket. And you could fold, rest your head on your hands, whatever works for you. If you're in pain, we'll hold this for 60 seconds. I am actually kind of it for you. Um, if you're in pain, your knee, your hips, anywhere, just lay down and do this figure four instead. This is a good option too. And otherwise, holding this pose isn't easy. Looks like the splits. But if you're letting yourself wander mentally, come back to that intention, that little mantra. Inhale, I've arrived, I've arrived, I've arrived. And then exhale, I'm home, I'm home, I'm home. So that no matter how uncomfortable things can get on the outside, that feeling of home, that feeling of comfort inside, feeling of grounding, yourself. Take another deep breath. And then hands come to floor. We're sitting up. Lean to your right and swing your left leg around. I'm going to turn so you can see better. But this is called Jami Vishirshasana. I hope you guys can see me. And you have sole of right foot to a straight left leg. Flex this left foot and then turn your ribs to face the left leg. And then hinge from hips and legs. Just reach for shin, ankle, maybe your foot. Don't worry so much about grabbing your foot. It's not the goal of this pose. Um, the focus here is to expand again, to elongate, to open up and just let your body melt and calm down. So keep drawing your ribs to left inner thigh. Your heart is pressing more forward up the shoulders with the muscles of the One more breath. 
Now look up. Let's release the forward fold, but bring it right hand behind your left arm high. And you could pick your hips up and arch. And then we'll take a deep breath. And bend your left knee. Um, if you have trouble sitting on the floor, just pop up on like a pillow. Uh, but bend your left knee and grab your foot with your right hand and your knee to hand. And just to sway very gently like you're rocking the baby back and forth. And if this feels really good, you can bring solo foot to crook of right elbow. I usually mirror in my classes, so I get really confused when I'm doing the right side. Um, and then left arm, left knee. And then you have a beautiful little shin baby you can work with here. Again, little rocks, lift your heart up, to have the last thing. This is not for everyone what I'm about to do, but those of you that want to try, it's called compass pose. So you'll hook with a little forklift, left arm under your knee. Take your right hand to your uh, top of left foot, and then try swinging your knee over your shoulder like a backpack, okay? This is already a lot for a lot of us, but your left hand could be on the floor from there, and you're gonna be able to kick your foot out and just add a little twist, kicking into your armpit. Good, compass pose, unpretzel ourselves, unwind. We'll meet in plank, hands to floor and feet step back, chaturanga to nasana, exhale. Upward facing, inhale, relax the glutes, lift your thighs and hamstrings, and then downward facing dog, exhale. Now left heel picks up, pigeon. So your knee will come to floor outside of pinky finger and shin crosses the mat. The right knee can scoot back. Remember, have your ribs facing forward. So this right rib spiraling to the front and your left femur, plug that Lego piece back and you can fold 60 seconds. Feel free to lay down like before, do that figure four. And then find space where you're gripping. Let your fingers relax. Have your teeth and jaw unclench here. Eyes soften your whole face. Just relax as much as you can. And then breathe, especially where you feel this the most for a lot of us. It's in this left glute, hip, psoas, even the inner thigh, and what you're probably feeling the most intense is what's called your piriformis. Um, imagine that unwinding and unraveling a little bit more with every breath, but it's a big knot that with the exhales kind of smooths it out a little easier. And then take one more breath here. And place your hands back on the floor. We're sitting up and leaning left. And then swing your right leg around. So you have, let's flip again, sole of left foot to a straight right leg. John Usher Shasana A. So turn slightly right and fold, reaching for shin, ankle. You could grab your foot, but make sure we're not here. Your chest is pressing through more and your head can hang. So keep drawing right, uh, left ribs to your right inner thigh. Uh, sit up now and bring your left hand behind you. Right arm high, stay down or hips up, arch. Take your seat. Okay, have a little fun by bending the right knee. Grab right foot with left hand, knee to hand. And again, you can just stay here, maybe pop up on a pillow or something. Those of you ready to go a little further, sole of foot to left elbow. Find your shin baby. So flex this foot and don't round your back. Lift, lift, lift through your heart and just kind of work a little back and forth. If you're following me, forklift right arm under right shin and left hand captures top of right foot. And then swing your knee up with your little backpack. Careful of your back. I don't want you to hurt your back with this. Your right arm goes off to the side and then kick your heel away. The next step is twisting underneath your armpit. Okay, oof, unpretzel yourself here. Let's bring our feet to the floor. Knees are bent, arms extend, and we'll lie down. And then walk your heels in so close that you can be pretty close to your fingertips. Some of you could even touch fingertips to heels. Don't worry if you can't. <laughs> but we didn't really get in a lot of back bends, so it's like shoulder blades down or back, and we'll do two bridge poses. So feet and knees hip width, inhale, hips up to the sky. Exhale, shoulders tuck deeper down. Now you could clasp your fingers, knuckles to heels. Relax the upper glutes, lift from hamstrings. 
squeeze inner thighs like you're trying to hold a little block between your knees. And your chin pulls just a bit off your chest. Take one more inhale, lift more. And then exhale, take it all the way down. And then you can windshield wiper your knees. Now, if you have a full, it's called upward facing bow or Vinayasana, but people call it wheel. If you have that in your practice, here's the time to take it. If you don't, let's find bridge again, just following the inhale, hips up. Exhale, maybe hands clasp. Shoulder heads come wrap down, inner thighs squeeze in. Pull your chin off with your chest, keep breathing. Good, one more inhale. Exhale, let's take it down. Again, knees can sway. And now hug your knees into your armpits. So squeezing knees down. It's like child's pose, really. If you want, you can lift your head a little, lift the upper back more. And then put your feet on the floor. Open your arms like a T, like cactus, and we're twisting. So shift your hips a few inches to the left, knees right. And you could hook your right hand outside of left thigh, and you'll turn your gaze to the left, keep your left shoulder anchored down, and then breathe. And then inhale back to center. Exhale, knees go left. And gaze turns right. And again, you could add hands to outer thigh with your knees. And inhale back to center. Exhale, knees to chest again for happy baby. And stack ankles over knees. You could just grab your shins, maybe your outer feet. Crack a little left to right this time. <laughs> and then we'll rest in what we call Shavasana. So have your legs extend out to the corners of your mat. And your arms are by your sides with palms up, shoulders tucked down. And then close your eyes here for just a few minutes of your day. You have permission to completely rest. So settle in to stillness and let your mind be as still as your body, turning back to home. Start to notice your breath again. Deep breath in, I have arrived. Sigh it out, I'm home. Wiggle your fingers, your toes. Roll out your wrists and your ankles. 
Reach your arms up overhead and stretch. So inhale, lengthen. And relax when you exhale. Put your feet on the floor with bent knees and just roll over to one side. And take your time pressing up to a comfortable seat. And once you're there, your hands can meet in prayer at your heart, or maybe just hands in your lap, whatever you want. And connecting again to this sense of grounding within yourself. And then once you feel grounded within yourself, connecting that with the community, the sense of connection. Maybe this grounding in our community. My hope for you is that you feel really good right now. You feel more at home, more at peace in your body. That you feel safe. May you be safe and healthy and live in this world with joy and ease. Thank you, everyone, and Namaste. I appreciate all of you being here with me. My name is Kate Rivard. Um, I hope to see you again someday. I do teach online right now and I teach all over DC. You can find me on my website, just katerivard.com. Uh, I have weekly classes, workshops. I am a massage therapist as well. So maybe someday when I'm allowed to give massages again, let me know if you need one, which I'm sure we all do. Um, today at one o'clock, I am teaching a beginner's workshop for sun salutation. So if you are new to yoga and this felt a little bit overwhelming and you want really step-by-step -step instructions on chaturanga, up dog, down dog, one o'clock, you can find that on my website, but it's actually through a yoga studio called Bluebird Sky Yoga, um, which is in Brooklyn. And so maybe I'll see you later today as well. It's only an hour and a half, it's $20, which um, is hopefully accessible for you. Um, but otherwise, thank you guys, and thank you so much, Heather. I am so appreciative of you putting this together. It has to be a lot of work to do all of this and coordinate it. So thank you. Thank everyone. you, Kate, for class. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Everyone who's still on, I'm putting Kate's website in the chat so you can find her. Um, and also, if you missed our brief meditation at the beginning, or even if you were here and you didn't get a chance to read them, um, actually, I guess if you were late, you wouldn't get to see them. But um, if you were here and you want to go back, you can scroll up and read everybody's beautiful stories of connection that they were connecting with this morning during our meditation. So you can go up and read those. Thank you all so much. We'll see you next Saturday. And thank you, Kate, again for uh, thank you. giving us a wonderful class. Thank you all.